Okay, so the Dutch Factory, we are a theatre company and what we want to do is to uh, create a platform for people, actors, singers, musicians, and that they have a place where they can work and develop. Yeah. Yeah, and part of the development, no, that's we shouldn't say that. It's the... Um, no, do you know what? The Dutch Factory does two things. We have development, which is a place for actors, musicians and dancers where they can actually um, work and train their instrument. And we um, have shows. And currently we have Romeo and Juliet, but we're also thinking about new, new shows, always Shakespeare, done in a very unique way. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And as, as the Dutch factory, we're constantly striving for, an, for new ways to, to bring stories to the audience. Yeah. And the training that we do helps us to, to discover new ways, to find new ways to tell the stories from mm -hmm. our instrument and from, from the moment that we're in and, and, and make us available for the moment to play the stories in the moment. And our shows are the result of that. And, and uh, again, also a moment to discover what is it now that we are as an actor in front of the audience and how can we together with the audience tell the story uh, today and, and make it together with the audience as, a, as, as one. Oké, okay, ik kom zo meteen nog even op terug. Eerst even gewoon de basisvragen. Yep. Met hoeveel zijn jullie? Hoe groot is de groep? Oké, okay, so we've got um, 14, 15 people right now that train on a regular basis. Um, but that differs. So people are always welcome to join and people are always welcome to leave as well. So the group is sort of expanding and then uh, becomes a bit smaller again, depending. This is, however, the practice group. That's not the same group of actors that perform, because the performers at the moment for Romeo and Juliet, that's six people. Um, actually, we, we are gaining a few new actors. Yeah. So we will have a crew of round about eight, probably, but only five will be performing, max of six. And why is that? Why are there five or six men who do the we believe that we can tell the story best with a small group of actors where we are in touch with each other and constantly in the scene. And with five actors, we have the, the best control over, over the story that we tell in the moment without losing context yeah. with, with, with the story. Uh, as soon as it gets more, then we feel that actors are playing just a role instead of the whole story. And with five, we can play the whole story yeah so we have to be on the ball of our feet to really make sure that we can tell the entire story with just five and i think what is amazing is that um we had one audience member the other day that actually said i had a feeling that there were 20 of you guys but there were only five so we also believe that you don't need 20 in order to create 20 characters or 25. okay <coughs> Uh, waarom heb je ervoor gekozen om dit alleen maar in woonkamers te doen? Waarom is het een woonkamervoorstelling? It is not necessarily just living rooms. We, we started Romeo and Juliet with a big crowd, big locations, and we discovered that it's very easy to get distracted. And what we want is to really involve people into the play and into the story. So that's when we decided to do to change with a, and do it with a smaller cast also start with living rooms to have a really small secluded space so people have nowhere to hide but be in the story yeah it's also a place of mm. uh, uh the living room is a place where you where you feel at home and where you can be yourself uh, at home and how wonderful is it to bring a love story of two people that want to be together and feel at home together to bring mm. that to the living room and and have people in this comfortable environment live the story and experience the story. Okay. Vertel nog even, want dat, dat is mijn stem gaat een beetje uit. Dus je, uh, in jullie eigen woorden van wij spelen deze voorstelling meestal in huiskamers en dan even om dat en de rest heb je al verteld. Maar dat is even het zinnetje. Okay. Ja. Yeah. Oké, okay, so, so we um, usually perform Romeo and Juliet in living rooms um, because actually you had a very good answer to that. Thank you. Can you repeat it? We usually perform our um, our stories in living rooms because we think the living room is the place for people to feel at home and to feel at comfort. Yeah. 
and um, how wonderful is it to bring a love story of two people that want to feel at home together to the living room, to the space where people can, can be comfortable and, and live the story. Yeah. Um, and for the audience, the reason why we have audiences in living rooms is because they are being brought into other people's houses. It reconnects people in a different way. It's amazing how strangers can feel at home in somebody's house and living room quite quickly. And that also helps because they are in the story. So everybody in the living room is experiencing the same thing without having distractions from outside, yeah. um, which, which makes us one for that hour, two hours. Maar is het dan ook niet voor het, voor het publiek heel erg eng? Ik kan me voorstellen dat ik er niet naartoe ga, want dan denk je van, gaat het zo dan zit ik daar en ik word naar me gekeken mm. en dan wordt die naar me gevraagd. Hoe werkt dat? Is het voor een speciaal publiek? Ja, yeah, no, the, the funny thing, um, the reason that it, it is very scary for audiences when they have no idea what they're going to. And we have had people come into the living room saying, hi, we're here because we just wanted to try something different. But because we welcome them, we are ourselves, um, people that host us in their living rooms are very welcoming and very open. Uh, people tend to feel at home even before the show starts. So it's our job to make people feel comfortable and we won't drag them into the story. We're not giving them any parts to play, but they are present and we say yes to whatever they have to offer. So I think, in my opinion, that takes away the scariness yeah. of the show. So, yeah, in how far works this? <coughs> well, it, it works in a way that that people don't truly experience it as a performance because the 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 threshold between being outside the performance and in the performance is so small that you don't even notice that you are already in it. We've started before, you know, um, and therefore people are 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 not aware of the fact that they are right in the middle of the story because they are so so um uh, yeah it's just so surrounded by the story that they don't notice they are in it actually i think another reason why it works on top of this is that um we've had people already come to us after shows because i think that's the best way to measure whether it works or not that have told us that they understood the story for the first time after having read it several times or seen it in different ways, this is the moment where they went like, oh, that's what the story is about. Or they said to us, I couldn't follow everything you said, but I was there and present and moved by everything that happened. Um, so what happens often at the end of a show, you have this weird silence, which mm. I always find very hard to deal with, where you, <laughs> yeah, you love it, I don't, but hey. Um, where, where, where you feel that people are really in it and they really have to snap out of the fact that they've just been into a different world for the last two hours. Yeah. Um, How wonderful is it that, that the audience is so in the story that they forget to clap because they don't realize they're in the story. They're just, they're just, they don't see a performance. They just saw, they read a book and you don't applaud after a book. You, you just close it and then you go on with your life. Uh, so, so being in the story so much and forgetting to clap is actually an example of people who just forget that that they are seeing a performance. Yeah. Jullie kiezen voor deze voorstelling, Rome en Julia. Het is een vrij heftige, zware kost. Waarom kies je daarvoor? Waarom niet gewoon een lekker luchtig, leuk iets? Doe je zegt zelf al, mensen begrijpen het niet eens. Ja. Ze beleven het wel, maar ze begrijpen het niet. Waarom dan toch deze keuze? Uh. It's the story of people that follow their hearts. Their, their, their own heart, their, their, uh, their goals in life. And we believe that to live life to the fullest, you need to... Yeah. Yeah. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. Yeah, Romeo and Juliet is a story. Yeah. And then it's the same. What can you then do? And Yeah, I believe. Yeah, true. So Romeo and Juliet is a story of people that follow their heart. And we believe that to truly live life, you need to uh, follow your dreams and and uh, and 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 live life to the fullest. And um, uh, we ourselves do that uh, in in performing this story and and think that mm -hmm. this is a story that still is relevant today in this life where where life is not easy. Um, it never is. 
I dare to take it even a step further. I think we live it, not just when we do the story, but as ourselves. Running the Dutch factory the way we do, living our lives the way we do. Yeah. For me in life, following your heart and dreams is very important. So when we decided to choose plays, Shakespeare plays, um, we said we should choose something that has a, has a meaning and a value to us, something that we want to bring across to the world or to Holland or to whomever sees it, which is dare to follow your dreams and dare to follow your heart. And that's what these two people do. Yeah. But the is why, of course, you can also choose for each with itself to take with each with each as well. Krijg je wel eens feedback terug dat het gewoon niet te begrijpen was? Hoe is de feedback? Ja. Um, uh, we, we the feedback we get after the story, uh, after people saw it, is that uh, very different. Some people say we couldn't understand a word of what has been said. Uh, the language is too difficult for us. But even though we couldn't understand we we followed the whole story we saw from how he played we from from what the the language gave us the sounds that 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 gotten in our uh, came came to our ears um we we could follow the complete story even though we couldn't understand the words yeah. and and that's one side and other people say for the first time i could understand every word that has been said and and realize how beautiful shakespeare wrote and we think that's the power of Shakespeare as well, that that it can have all these things. It doesn't matter how well you understand. It is like a piece of music that that gives something to everyone. I can still listen to Arabic music and and understand what it's been what what it says. So so I guess we trigger different senses. So instead of approaching people intellectually, by because they aren't always able to understand every word and they can't grab every single bit. They are forced to listen to their feelings and their instincts and they are forced to look at it. Is that not precisely the reason why you don't in a woonkamer? You can't even hear the sound? Or that by elkaar? I do think it becomes a lot easier when you have a small secluded space with few people and it's really in your face to let go of your intellectual brain and you get sucked into your feelings and emotions and whatever happens under the surface. As, as, it, as we're in a theater, I think escaping, when things come too close, escaping from that is a lot easier because you're in a dark space surrounded by loads of people and you can just shut out, sh like shut off for a second and then come back. Whilst here, you are, you, there is no way, nowhere to go. And therefore it's easier to allow yourself to become attached to the story and attached to whatever it means to you. Is it your idea ook om het echt met spijt te spelen, of is your idea om het in zo'n woonkamer het publiek er heel erg bij te betrekken? Of blijft het publiek als audience gewoon een publiek? Well, our 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 goal is eventually every every single performance. Our goal is to get the audience into the story as much as possible so we forget that there is an audience and the audience forgets that we are players yeah. um, in that way i think a story is the most touching and and uh stimulates the fantasy of, of both sides the most where we can both forget the outside world and grow into the story so the the end goal is to be one and to create as one as if somebody walks into a living room and tells a personal story where people listen to and have ideas about and ask questions about. I have begrepen that you did not before the Can you tell us what to tell Yeah, we never, we never... Um, we do prepare. We, yeah, we never prepare for a show, but we do prepare uh, our whole life as a I preparation. Th I, yes, <laughs> no, I, I think what we do is we, we really 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 prepare the lines and we really try to understand uh, the composition of Shakespeare's writing so we want to understand what he said how he said it how it sounds what the rhythm is what the different rhythms are and how that connects into one piece of music that's our preparation but then we improvise so then we we put ourselves in the moment we listen to the other sound and music, which is the audience, the objects that they bring, the living room, uh, how the other actors feel at that moment. And we use all that 
to 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 create the play in the moment to find re 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 refine reconnect to rediscover the story. Why is it bijna unmöglich om op deze manier te werken? Because you weet nooit wat het resultaat zal zijn. True, you never know what the result is, but that's the same as in life. You never know what the result of a certain day is. And still, every day hmm. is beautiful on its own. Or if hard. You really, if you really look at it, uh, the downs and the ups, the, the, the ugly moments are as beautiful as the lovely moments. Uh, even when you live it and you are in an ugly moment, you can still enjoy it in a way because that's life. I mean, there's no ups without downs. And in the way we work, there's the same results because the the the, the ugly pieces of theater that we make um, are as beautiful as the lovely pieces and I um, think we make. And life is unpredictable, always. So you can always prepare. We always prepare. We have diaries. We know what's going to happen next, but we don't know how it's happening. We don't know what it will bring us. We can have an idea of what it will bring, but not for real. And in order to to feel that involved and really live the moment, as Gerben just said, really enjoy each bit, even if it sucks, still take it because it is life. Um, that's that's why we we do it the way we do it. Um, as we if we we can play a part, but then it becomes unreal, and you create distance. And you don't get moved, yeah. and you don't get emotional, you don't get challenged. Yeah, if we if we prepare, then it means that eventually we mm -hmm. play the preparation in yeah. the show, which yeah. is in between us and the audience. Yeah. So preparing means uh, creating a barrier between the audience and between ourselves, and creating a barrier bet between us and the story. Reproducing your preparation. We're playing yeah. our our preparation, our opinion on on the part. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you don't prepare and you just play it in the moment, then 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 you you don't stand in between the moment, the story and and the audience. You um, that's very vague how I how I'm saying this, but um, no. What, what I think what 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 you what 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 I think you mean <laughs> is we do prepare, but we don't reproduce our preparation. So we prepare to be ready for the unknown, like sports players. They train a lot, but when they are, no. when they are having a, a match for the Olympic golden medal, um, they are not sure whether they will make it, they are not sure how they're going to win the race, but they are fully prepared to deal with whatever comes. That's what we do. In uh, I, I, I'd say it works always, because people are always moved in a way. Whether it's, when, when I think when people reflect on what they've seen or, or, or what they've discovered, they always reflect on the moments where they really realize that everything happened just now and only once. They comment on, oh, I remember that that person walked into the bar when they were in the middle of a very intense scene and they had to deal with it and they did. And then I felt like, um, or when they snap out of it and they're just, I can't speak right now because pff, I just have to, that's when you realize that, um, I think it always works when people are authentic. A really, really weird, really weird comparison, and I'm not sure if you want to use this, but uh, I was at a funeral and I had two people, two people that, well, there was one people that was doing a speech, a prepared speech. They, have, they, they wrote it down and they actually said what they wrote down and they just disconnected from the emotions because they didn't want to feel anything. They just wanted to say what they wanted to say. And it was beautiful what they wrote down, but nobody could connect. So everybody that was listening to it stayed very calm and disconnected and mainly thinking, gosh, that must have been horrible for you. Then somebody said, I want to say something even though it wasn't planned. And they got up to the stand and they just said, I, I will miss this. And they just started pouring out their hearts without any preparation, but sort of pre preparation because they knew it was a funeral and stuff like that. Everybody suddenly started crying. She was allowed to show her emotions and everybody sunk into the feeling and that united everybody at that moment. And then I suddenly realized that's what we're doing. We are connecting through honesty, vulnerability, um, failing with grace, 
preparing, but not to a point where you're safe, so we're always unsafe, because that is life. You can't be sure about anything, but we'll have to deal with it, and we do, and we do move on. So that's why I thought this works. This is why it works, because it's authentic in the moment and not planned.